Hello? Bobby? Look at you calling me on my day off. You're supposed to be interviewing forces of a street with me. Bobby, wait, but Bobby, wait. I don't even know what they look like. But Bobby? So, have you uh, seen her before? No. I mean, you have. No, I haven't. What did. You, you, the videos, I'll let you saw the videos. Yeah. I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't do videos. You don't? Don't spend much time on the computer. Okay, great. Well, this is great. How, how are we going to recognize her? Uh, I thought you knew. Um, yeah, I, you, you thought, but... What's your name? What's your name? Caitlin. Caitlin. You saw her! Caitlin. Caitlin. Yeah. Caitlin. I think that's her. Yeah, it's um, it's a it's a name of a uh, painting actually from uh, exactly 100 years ago, coincidentally of course. Yeah, Forces of the Street was supposed to represent both in the painting and somewhat in the band the idea of um, you know the dynamism of things like cars and and you know energetic people moving down you know a modern street. About 100 years ago, that freaked people out a lot more than it did now. We're trying to bring back that uh, idea of energy, I think. About pro -Icarus, what does that mean? Well, pro icarus kind of comes from the, uh, the idea of the myth of Daedalus and Icarus, um, where I've always felt that when it came to that myth, everybody was really on the side with Daedalus being admonishing towards Icarus. And uh, Justin and I talked about it, and we, we kind of felt that Icarus had the right idea, and it obviously it didn't really work out for him because his wings melted because of the sun. And, um, yeah. but uh, if everyone had the same mentality of Icarus, of, of moving forward at, at all costs, you know, I don't think everybody would end up getting got by the sun. Eventually, eventually, uh, somebody's got to get the sun. I mean, right now, it's, it's arguable that uh, there, there's too many people telling you, telling me that, you know, slow down, you know, we're here, we've arrived, or it's going to get worse, so just bear with it. And it's like, I don't think we should accept that. It's the embrace of whatever happens next at the expense of what's happening now. You go outside and you see people just driving casually in all different directions in these big metal machines that are like cars. You know, 200 years ago, if people saw that, it would be a very terrifying thing. But now we have all this progress and we're just kind of casual with it. And I think that's actually the terrifying thing. If driving in your car is no longer supposed to be such an intense thing, we need something to replace that. So I've noticed there's a lot of sound modulation in your guys' music. Um, what's with that? Well, I've always, I've always uh, felt that sounds, to me, are a lot like words. And uh, I've, I'm a big believer that every word is a life. Station, one of the songs that we've done, uh, was primarily sampled from a, uh, a dial tone recording. That uh, sounds nothing like a dial tone recording. And it, it's almost like a, a very strange relationship I have with that dial tone recording, where I look at that dial tone recording and I, I, I listen to it and I say, wow, we've come a long way, dial tone recording. <laughs> you don't sound anything like the dial tone recording. You're like growing up now. <laughs> I, you know, I like I like writing songs that um, have a catchy side to them overall. But I think it's important to try, to kind of like jostle people a little bit uh, sonically. It's, it's, it's just another way to uh, deny comfort, <laughs> right? Yes. yes. It's all about. Oh, no comfort for you. No. There's no comfort for you. Especially the song scope. Uh, are the lyrics really important to you guys? Do they play a huge part in your music? Scope was about. Um, a relationship between two people, possibly sentient people, that is not necessarily possibly sentient. Possibly sentient. We don't it's, know. It's not necessarily a romantic relationship, but there is some uh, reciprocal need for each other there. But the relationship is undefined by time and space. So effectively, they're everywhere, they're every when. And to me, that would be a really big obstacle for any kind of relationships. It's, it's a very secure thing knowing that what's happened has happened. 
But if that was taken away from us, it would be pretty unsettling. And, and I think, for me anyways, I, I, that's what I get out of some of those lyrics. Mr. Nick Homenda, uh, he's adding a lot of skill, that's for sure. A uh, very tasteful guy with uh, the way he plays, and um, uh, he's a he's a classically trained musician actually. So he's um, you know he's he's keeping us uh, on the straight and narrow. He's actually our second Nick, um, along yeah. with Nick Fogel, our bassist, performing like a little tightly knit little group. Wait, you guys know a bit about the start of Post Echo. Who's behind this whole thing? 